Welcome to this talk about the paper on the Nizan Ronan conjecture for submodular valuations by Orgos Christodoulou, Elias Kutsopias, and myself. The conjecture in the title is about mechanisms for the unrelated machine scheduling problem. In the classic version of this problem, we are given n machines and m tasks, and the input is such a matrix of the running times of each task on the different machines. Uh, the goal is to allocate each task to exactly one of the machines so that the make span, which is the maximum finish time over all machines, is minimized. Uh, I guess what you should just remember from this slide is that the TIJ are the running times of the tasks that the different rows, the end rows of the matrix stand for the end machines, that the small a is the allocation matrix, it is a zero one matrix, and that uh, the finish time of machine I, we will also call the cost of the machine. In the mechanism design model, introduced by Nizan and Ronan uh, in a famous paper, about 20 years ago, every machine is possessed by an agent or a player so that the running times in the row I of the input matrix are private values known only to the player I. The players can report uh, arbitrary running times to the scheduling algorithm, also false running times. These reported running times, which are also called, called bids, um, are in this input matrix to the, to the scheduling algorithm. This is this matrix of the bids. So we need a so-called mechanism, or better, a truthful mechanism, which uh, consists of an appropriate allocation algorithm and of appropriate payments given to the machines that uh, can motivate them to report their running times truthfully. That is the profit of a machine is the payments that he gets for performing the jobs minus his cost. And a mechanism is truthful if it is designed so that uh, a machine who reports his running times truthfully maximizes this profit regardless of what the other machines do. A simple example for a truthful mechanism is the VCG mechanism for this setting, which allocates each task independently from the other tasks to the fastest machine for that task. This allocation can be uh, complemented by truthful payments and is actually a special case of a more general mechanism or auction named after Vikery, Clark and Groves, which always, always minimizes the sum of the costs of the players or equivalently maximizes the sum of the valuations of the, of the players. Unfortunately, for make span minimization, which is not minimizing the sum of the costs, but minimizing the maximum cost over the machines. This allocation has a very bad approximation. It is n approximative, n was the number of the machines. As you can see here on the example, we have four machines. The optimum uh, make span would be 101 if each machine gets one task and the VCG allocates each task to the first machine and achieves a make span of 400. Uh, however, in this mentioned paper, Initiating Algorithmic Mechanism Design, Nizan and Ronan formulated the conjecture that this is the best approximation of the make span, that a truthful mechanism for the unrelated scheduling problem uh, can can have, regardless of running time issues. Among known truthful mechanisms, besides the VCG mechanism, let me mention 
two generalizations of the VCG. The first one is task independent mechanisms. Um, these allocate the tasks independently of each other, but not necessarily to the, to the fastest machine of the task. And the other generalization is uh, affine minimizers. These minimize, instead of the sum of the costs of the machines, um, affine function of the cost, so a linear function of the costs with uh, non-negative additive constants. Uh, what you should note here is that uh, the allocation is determined by linear functions of the running times of the machines in the case of affine minimizers, but mm, by not necessarily linear functions in the case of task independent mechanisms. This will be important later in our proof. Uh, let me just mention very quickly some relevant results. Concerning the original nissan roland conjecture, so in the general case, uh, numerically little progress, progress has been made. The current best record to the best lower bound is just uh, one plus the golden ratio, so still a small constant as opposed to the, to the conjectured number n, the number of machines. This lower bound n has been proven for restricted mechanism classes. And the deepest result or the most challenging case here is the case of anonymous mechanisms where the machines play symmetric roles by uh, Ashlagi, Dobzhinsky and Lavi who showed the lower bound of n for this case. And finally, let me mention some characterization results for the special case um, of two players, of two machines. These two papers characterize all truthful mechanisms in this case as uh, task independent or affine minimizers or, or products of these. The, both, the two papers um, have different, slightly different assumptions or, or uh, conditions. And actually, we have also a different, uh, different conditions from, from these papers. And therefore, we kind of had to redo this characterization for two machines. So in the long version of the paper, uh, you can see our characterization. And indeed, for our conditions, we also found the new generalization of affine minimizers which we called relaxed affine minimizers. So what is our result? The nissan ronan conjecture is about the unrelated machine scheduling problem, which means that the machines uh, have additive costs. Yeah? So the running times of the jobs on a machine are simply added up. What we show is a lower bound of about square root of n in the case when only one of the machine has a slightly um, a slightly broader space of valuations than the additive space. This can be uh, the submodular uh, valuations or supermodular valuations or epsilon additive valuations, which is something like almost additive uh, valuations. So clearly here we consider a different class of mechanisms than the original conjecture, but notice that in general for many players and tasks um, also little is known about the, the set of all these truthful mechanisms in, in the submodular case, for example. The next slide just uh, reminds you of the different types of set functions or cost functions um, in our case, but I guess I skipped this slide now because most of you are familiar with these set functions. 
and come to the main ideas of our proof. Um, fortunately, uh, truthful mechanisms are characterized also in terms of only the, the scheduling algorithm. This characterization says that a scheduling algorithm A has truthful payments or can be complemented by truthful payments if and only if the scheduling algorithm is a so-called weakly monotone algorithm. This weak monotonicity property, uh, as I said, concerns only the allocation algorithm. And in fact, it concerns only the allocation to a single player when the running times of all other players, that is all other machines are fixed. Let's just illustrate this weak monotonicity geometrically for the case of two tasks and a single player I. So if all other running times are fixed, then this is a possible figure of the allocation of tasks one and two to the player I, depending on his own running times for these two jobs. As you can see, if he bids small running times for both jobs, then he gets both. If he bids small for one job and large for another, then he just gets one of them and so on. And weak monotonicity implies for any two tasks and any player that this kind of allocation figure has a very restricted type of, of figure, a restricted shape. It must be one of these shapes, one of these three shapes. And if we consider more than two tasks, then we have analogous figures uh, in higher dimensions implied by weak monotonicity. And here's another notion that we need to discuss here. For fixed running times, uh, running time of the second job, this point here, this value here for the running time of the first job is the so-called critical value, which, uh, which is the boundary between getting or losing the task one for this TI1 value. This critical value we will denote by psi. And as you see, the critical value can be a function of uh, the running time of another job of the same player, as you see here. But this function has, again, a restricted possible types of shapes. And normally, of course, it will also be a function of uh, running times of other machines for the same job or for for other jobs. And here follows our lower bound construction. The lower, lower bound instance itself assumes additive valuation, so we can just present it simply by a matrix as usual. And a first idea is to allow only two machines or two players for each task to perform that task and set every other running time to a huge value. Uh, as you see, we uh, changed a bit the notation here. One of the allowed players or machines is always the first player, which we will call the T player. And the other players, uh, each of whom can perform one or two tasks, are called the S players. So each task can be performed uh, and either by the T player or by a dedicated S player. And we do this because we hope that uh, the two machine characterization can somehow be used or exploited in this case. And here it is, the two machine characterization, actually for two tasks only. It says that for two tasks and two machines with additive costs, so this is still the original problem, 
every truthful mechanism is either task independent or one dimensional or instead of affine minimizer let me immediately say this uh, newly found relaxed uh, affine minimizer this uh, generalization of affine minimizers uh, one dimensional mechanisms are very simple they just uh, choose between two possible allocations in this case in the figure uh, it is kind of a bundling mechanism which bundles the two tasks and gives both to one of the players and this is the the most important version for us uh, you will see why but before that let's take a look at this uh, critical value function here so now let's consider this critical value not as a function of the of the other task as we did before but as a function of the running time of the other allowed player for for the same task let's say that the other player now reduces his bit his running time then this is what is going to happen with the allocation figure and this function so the the critical value as a function of the other player's bit is linear in case of affine minimizers but it is not necessarily linear for task independent and one dimensional mechanisms relaxed affine minimizers they are a common generalization actually of affine minimizers and one dimensional mechanisms most of the time so to say uh, they behave like affine minimizers as so they are they have nice linear critical value functions but if we have relatively small bits for both players then they start to look like and behave like bundling mechanisms and at that moment they uh, may, may have nonlinear critical value functions another point is that if we allow one of the machines or both of the machines to be submodular then the task independent mechanisms disappear they are not they are not truthful anymore so the only remaining mechanisms then are one dimensional or relaxed affine minimizers so let's come to the proof to the actual proof and let's fix an arbitrary truthful mechanism and consider this instance where the t player has the same running time alpha uh, for every job where alpha is approximately one over square root of n and the s players have running time one each which means that the optimum make span is one on the left side uh, i will always show you a, a sketch of the allocation figure of the T player. And now let's first see the first case when the T player receives in our mechanism all of the tasks for this input. This is the easiest case because the optimum is one. The make span is then n minus one times alpha, which is square root of n minus one. And this is precisely the approximation factor that we promised. Otherwise, if not the T player receives all the tasks, then there must be a task, let's say the task I, that is given to the S player, not to the T player. As you see, this is the dimension of the task I, and it is not given to the T player, and it is not here. Uh, this point is always the, the bit of the T player. So it is here given to the S player. So now the long-term plan is to set for every other task, um, to make every other task trivial by setting either its T value or its S value to zero so that the task i is still given to the s player if we manage to do this for every other task 
then we will have a, an instance with approximation factor one over alpha, which is square root of n minus one again, and then we will be ready. So how shall we do this? Well, the easier case is if there are tasks so that if we set the t value to zero of the task, then it does not change the allocation of the task i. So it's still given to the s player. As long as there exist such tasks, we can iteratively set their t values to zero and uh, get rid of these tasks, actually. The more difficult case is if uh, there are no more such tasks, which means that at this moment, if we set at the t value of any more task to zero, then the task i will go to the t player. So according to this figure, then the idea is uh, not to set the t value to zero, but to set the s value of j to zero. What happens if we set the s value? Then the, the point, this point remains here. Yeah? This is the, the bit of the, of the t player, but the figure will change somehow. And what we hope is that it will change this way so that the task i still remains with the s player. Notice that uh, we have no guarantee that this will happen because we don't have an affine minimizer. We have a, a very general unknown mechanism on many players, many tasks, and actually we, we don't know much about it. But we have a crucial technical tool in the paper, which we call linearity lemma. And it says that in fact, this is what is going to happen if we change the, the SJ. Uh, what we hope that that will happen. If we can guarantee that this critical value as a function of SJ is a linear, is some linear function for every single TI here. If we say that this is a linear function for every ti, then the lemma guarantees that it is the same linear function up to at this additive constant. That it, this change here, this function is the same linear function, which means that the allocation figure indeed changes precisely this way. Okay, the only thing we need now is um, to show that for a fixed ti, this function is a linear function. Why should it be that? Normally, this is not the case. In particular, if we remain with this input matrix, then we cannot guarantee that it is a linear function. Therefore, we change our input and allow two tasks or give two tasks per S player like this in the matrix. We give the original task to every S player and a dummy task. These gray ones are now the dummy tasks. Why is that good? Because from the two player two task characterization, we know that the mechanism on such a two times two input matrix must be a one dimensional or a relaxed affine minimizer. But we set the values of the dummy tasks so that actually it cannot be a one dimensional and it cannot be the relaxed part of the relaxed affine minimizer because then the approximation factor would be for the whole input huge, which means that it is indeed the the affine minimizer part of the relaxed affine minimizer. So the critical value function is linear. We can uh, apply the lemma. And indeed, if we set, if we reduce the SJ to zero, 
this is what is going to happen and the task guy must still go to the S player. That is, we can do this one by one for each task to set the T or the S value to zero. So here we just hide the dummy tasks, but they are there actually. And we arrive at such an input instance with optimum value alpha, because every other task is now trivial. The opt is alpha, R makes pen is one, and the approximation factor is one over alpha, which is square root of n minus one. So I guess I don't have the time to read out these concluding remarks now. So I will leave you with this nice slide here alone. Sorry for that. And thank you for your attention.